Hey guys, how are you all doing? I'm doing fine myself. So I recently stumbled across a Flat Earth channel that has slipped past my eyes, called Potter's Clay. He makes a few interesting videos, so I decided to check it out. But like with all Flat Earth content, I'm not very impressed. Welp, it's not like I have anything else to respond to right now, so let's do his channel. I'll be taking a look at a few of his videos, one about the sun and one about gravity. He does make an interesting point in the latter, which I've never heard before, so I think it'll be somewhat interesting. Alright, let's get this done and over with. Mine's not working. Just tilt the marshmallow, Charlie. It's still not working. No, Charlie, tilt it 23.5 degrees. Oh yeah. There we go. Ah yes, nothing's better than a little gag to start off a video. <laughs> that was pretty good though, I'll give you that. Okay, I'm gonna make a few cuts here and there because for some reason he expects people to read this with the pace of a first grader. Yes, it's the tilt that matters the most in terms of temperature and seasons, for two reasons. Firstly, receiving direct sunlight or sunlight at an angle can greatly increase or decrease the amount of heat you receive. If your hemisphere is tilted away from the sun, that means a larger portion of the land is being covered by the same amount of sunlight compared to the area, say the equator, that receives direct sunlight. You'll reduce the amount of light per area of ground by fractions depending on where you are. I don't understand how this is so difficult to grasp. Less sunlight per unit of ground equals colder. More sunlight per unit of ground equals warmer. The second reason that tilt matters is the fact that areas tilted away from the sun end up having the light pass through more area of the atmosphere before actually hitting the surface of the earth. And since the atmosphere is full of particles and clouds that could potentially reflect sunlight back to space, this can also work to reduce temperatures in said areas. This is a lesser factor compared to the first point I mentioned though. So, what's your point here? No matter what model of the earth you choose to accept, flat or round, you're always going to have a point in time in which an area of land is not receiving sunlight. I assume you're trying to make an argument saying how night should be extremely cold or something because it doesn't receive light from the sun. Now, you're not very clear in your video, but if you are making that point, then I'm simply just disappointed that you even thought of such an argument and then presented it in a video. Look, it's not just sunlight that contributes to warmth. The atmosphere, along with greenhouse gases, are also very important. While the sun directly gives heat to earth, the atmosphere works to trap that heat and maintain it. So even during the night, although temperatures do temporarily drop, it doesn't reach like negative 200 degrees Celsius. Take mercury, for example. It is extremely hot during the day because of its proximity to the sun. But during the night, due to it not having an atmosphere and greenhouse gases present, temperatures can drop to almost negative 200 degrees. Now my second point here is, even if you're right and temperatures are supposed to drop, why wouldn't it work similarly on a flat earth model? Why are the lands not covered by sunlight still relatively warm? Come on man, think before you speak. Distance from the sun will always matter, but in this case not nearly as much. Let's take the numbers you presented here in your diagram. In the summer, the earth is 94.44 million miles away from the sun, while during the winter it is 91.33 million miles. Subtracting that, you get 3.11 million miles. While that sounds like a lot, it's actually very little in the grand scheme of things, especially considering the fact that it is only about 3% of the distance from the earth to the sun. And that's not a whole lot. In this sense, it makes a small difference, but compared to the tilt of the earth, it's minuscule and thus can be ignored. Okay, you giving that little trivial information doesn't help at all. Sure, 392 Earth sounds like a lot, but in the grand scheme of the size of the solar system and the massive distance between the Sun and Earth, that is practically nothing. But you know, let's just take a step back and think of this from another perspective. If it's true that the government and NASA came up with this globe Earth lie, and they started making shit up as background information, why would they give us the fact that the Earth is closer during the winter? Like if you made up the spherical Earth model and the solar system and whatnot, why would you add in the little information about the Earth's varying distances? Why not just say, oh, 
oh, it's the same distance during all times of the year. Or even better, the Earth is closer during the summer. Just think about that for a second. Alright, anyway, we're going to move on to the next video where he talks a little bit about gravity. Well, no, the lines of latitude are different and they measure different things, but whatever, keep going. Excellent! Glad he understands the basic concept of physics that many flat earthers don't. At least that's a step up. But wait, he brings up a very interesting point now. Alright, this is a very interesting question that many people might not know the answer to, so this is a perfect opportunity to reveal the answer to that question. Let's first consider centrifugal force and gravity. Speeds at the Earth's equator reaches about 450 meters per second, which sounds very fast but actually isn't, because centrifugal force is dependent on a lot of factors, not just the absolute speed. It is dependent on the mass of the object, velocity, and the radius of the spin path. The velocity is then dependent on radius itself, period of rotation, and degree of latitude. I'm not going to go into too much detail, but essentially when you crunch in the numbers, we find that at the equator, centrifugal force is only 0.3% of what the force of gravity provides. That is enormously small, so obviously gravity wouldn't have a problem with keeping people in place. However, that's only at the equator. What happens in places that aren't at the equator? The flat earther claimed that areas north and south of the equator, the centrifugal force is acting in a different direction than gravity, since it pulls objects towards the axis while gravity pulls objects towards the center of the earth. Okay, so this is where it gets interesting. Forces interact with each other. They can enhance or cancel each other out. If we look at the earth, gravity and centrifugal forces both come into play. The result is that you get an overall force that is pulling the object downwards, but at an angle just ever so slightly away from the axis, or the latitude lines. If you want to learn how to calculate the way forces interact with each other, I recommend a beginner level physics college class. Anyway, normally this force would affect our everyday lives. Theoretically, you should constantly feel a slight force pulling you towards the side, if you didn't live at the equator that is. However, it is because this sideways force exists that you don't feel it. Let me explain. Due to this slight force that pulls objects towards the side, it affects every everything on the earth, from the water in the sea to the dirt on the crust, and when they are affected, they ever so slightly get pulled in that direction until it forms a hill. This hill eventually flattens out so that its surface is perpendicular to the overall force produced by the centrifugal and gravitational forces, and that's exactly what we see. When this happens, it eventually alters the overall shape of the earth. We're used to depicting the earth as a perfect sphere, but that's simply not the case. It's actually slightly oval, protruding the most at the equator, and this is the shape that occurs due to the difference in direction between centrifugal and gravitational forces. The dirt and crust start moving towards the side and eventually creates this slightly oval shape. Now, whenever you stand at any point of the earth, you will be standing on a patch of land that is perpendicular to the overall force between gravity and centrifugal forces. That's why we don't feel a tug towards the side whenever we're not at the equator. It's because the shape of the earth has already altered and balanced it out. Keep in mind that the forces in play change direction as you move along the surface of the earth. But if you recalculate the, quote, combined forces of the two, it works out to be always perpendicular to the surface if you consider the fact that the earth is slightly oval in shape. Hmm, yeah, well you could have also done a bit of research to learn that the actual shape of the earth is what debunks your claim. Anyway, that's the end of this video. Thank you to all my patrons, especially Fireshard, Daniel Seibel, and Shirkon for being the top supporters. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more content like this one. Bye bye